Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Marjolein de Jong, but you can also call me Maddie. And today I'm going to draw my character Daniel. Daniel has been with me for quite a while already and he is quite dear to me. And recently he got a complete revamp. So I was thinking, well, maybe I can tell you something about him. Uh, on the background you see me illustrating and I am drawing Daniel with a big ass sweater and I am making it with Faber-Castell polychromos and with washi tape. If you don't know about washi tape, it is a sticky tape with a pattern on it and it can be basically anything. You have Van Gogh, uh, you have flowers, fishes, things like that and uh, it's not too sticky so you can take the extra tape off so you can get the shape right and you will see that later in the video. So without further ado, let's start at the beginning of Daniel's life. It has been quite a complicated one. And when I was in high school, uh, we had summer breaks, of course. And during the summer breaks, I would love to draw, watch anime, sleep long, relax, go to friends, have fun, play games, well, things like that. Teenager stuff. Still like it anyway. And in the time period, it was 2006. And I really loved the emo style. I didn't like the cutting or things like that, but the hairdos and the clothing. So I was really inspired by it. Inspired by it. I must say, I didn't wear it myself uh, because it can be quite expensive. And uh, I didn't feel I could uh, wear it. So, uh, teenage stuff, you know the drill. Um, so yeah, it was a warm summer day in 2006, July 2006. And after watching some Full Metal Alchemist, I really, really, really wanted to draw again. So I sat down at a table and I wanted to draw a demon. I think I was a bit inspired by the homunculi from Full Metal Alchemist and their bloody entrances sometimes. So I was thinking and I drew a picture of Daniel, the really first one. At that time he didn't have a name. I only knew he was a demon. He looked eh, mischievous to the camera and you can see the image right well, before I show the image um, it contains gore and blood so if you can't handle those things look away for 10 seconds so I can show you the image so if you have skipped here we go and as you can see uh, I wasn't good at perspective, I will take it away now, and um, he had quite some emo hairdo, but white, because white is epic. Um, so that was the first picture of Daniel. Um, my parents saw it and were like, oh yeah, she's in that phase, no worries about that. Um, and. After that drawing, I did some uh, something else, but he stuck with me, so I decided to draw him again. Again, same kind of situation, but now he was just surprised that someone uh, made an image on of him, and he looked like, a bit scared into the camera while munching on some arm. It wasn't as good as the first one, I thought. But it, it was okay. So that was the second one. And then there was a third illustration of him. And a fourth and a fifth. And it went on and on and on. So I, I didn't draw only blood. I also did make some other pieces where he looked cute and very cute and innocent. 
So he had two sides basically. And as I was drawing him more and more, um, his story developed as well. So in the beginning, uh, he was just a normal kid. His father was a scientist who had a colleague who was very ambitious. And that colleague and his father made a serum. And they wanted to test that serum, but uh, they didn't find people willing to do it. They had some strange results. Uh, So Daniel's father decided, no, I'm not going to do this. However, the colleague was so ambitious uh, that he decided to kidnap Daniel, give him the serum, and see what happened. So he locked Daniel up, gave him the injection, and left him for a bit. Well, Daniel changed, his ears got pointy and a bit hairy, for lack of better words, I'm sorry. Um... His hair was already white, so no change in that. But he also got some markings on his chest, his back, his feet, his arms. And um, those markings could bleed. So not very convenient markings. Well, speed forward, uh, a portal appeared and he was taken to another world where there were a lot of demons like him. And he was taken in by the king of that world. And, well, he learned all about it. The king was very kind to him, but he had to eat humans. In the beginning, he found it really hard, but to survive, he had to eat meat. A bit like Tokyo Ghoul, if you look at it now. I didn't know about those comics in the beginning, so... I don't, I don't know where I got it. Anyway, um, I also did a lot of role play with him. Um, I had some friends on Amazon. Jeez, I'm that old, and we played stories out. So, um, with one friend, it was in his universe and that world with the other demons and uh, characters were designed from left and right. There were so much characters at a certain point, like um, half-human dragons, um, a master of dark elements, a master of light elements, um, ancestors. Uh, Daniel was some special kind of chosen one because he would be the next king in line. Uh, There was an evil twin brother of the king, who had a kingdom of his own. Oh boy, I could talk hours about it, and I wouldn't even be finished, so I won't bother you with all those stories. But I had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And yeah, as a teenager, well, you sit a lot behind your computer. Yay. So, um, that was his first story, and... When I create a character, usually it's popular in my mind for a while. And by popular, I mean I draw in a a lot. Like, my sketchbook is filled with the same characters or the same universe. And after a while, it gets less popular and I draw them less. And some characters completely disappear for years. Some are just in the background, uh, uh, things like that happen. After a while of drawing Daniel a lot, and that period of time was quite long, I think it was around two years, 2008. Um, in 2008, I decided to uh, make other characters, and those got the spotlight. So Daniel were, was drawn less and less. And sometimes he would reappear again on the page. And sometimes as an adult, sometimes as a child. It, it differed. And after a bit of an absence, he returned again. And I think it was 
quite recently actually maybe 2016 something like that um, I made him older and I got rid of the markings on his face chest back feet arms etc um, because uh, I didn't feel the story that much anymore but I really like the ideas of a tattoo and uh, at that time uh, Ink Master was very popular on Dutch television so I would watch it every Monday because it was a weekly show then um, and there was one tattoo artist I think he, his name was Kyle and he had a big eye on his throat a tattoo of an eye on his throat I thought it was amazing I was curious about it I was wondering how much hurt he would have been through so um, I was inspired by that so I gave Daniel a tattoo on his throat as well uh, Daniel was now completely Daniel uh, with the demon story his name was Katsueki which is a Japanese word for blood edgy face I know uh, but I decided uh, no the demon story is gone so let's go with Daniel um, however I got rid of the demon story but I didn't come up with another story yet it was it was slowly developing uh, I knew he had a boyfriend silver but I I couldn't think of something very solid yet and of course it develops over time so that's okay but uh, so I drew him a couple of times and slowly he faded back in the background again so other characters came up and well I think in 2019 18 maybe I think late 19 I drew him again but I wasn't feeling the tattoos anymore it didn't feel like him and I came up with a concept that uh, when a person died in an accident and their body was still okay but for example you were brain dead or other things like that um, there was an experimental uh, treatment who could bring the person back to life and that treatment was with some kind of demon energy and I was thinking well that's quite interesting for Daniel because I wanted to root him in more in the real world but I wanted to keep his fluffy hairy ears because I love those and I thought it it could be quite interesting so I was thinking of that story and I decided well of course there needs to be some drama in it and I thought about his parents so uh, at a certain point I was like well that treatment can be really rough on some persons and even in the real world what would you do because if you could bring a person back to life I think I would do it but I can imagine that uh, with some beliefs people say no it, it was meant to be and we're not going to do that so you can't use that treatment and that got me thinking well what if a child got an accident and one parent says bring the child back to life but the other says no that's against everything I believe in and that got a very uh, intense thing <laughs> it's, I, I, I thought that would be quite interesting to use that, that situation so at a certain point I was thinking like okay Daniel he had an accident um, he was hit by a car 
And uh, even though his body didn't have too much damage, his he was brain dead. He was brought into the hospital and there uh, his mother was there and his father was at work. And his mother just decides without talking to his father about it to bring him back. And well, Daniel's dad isn't very happy with that. So uh, Daniel comes back. But his father says, no, I don't recognize him as my son anymore. Um, see ya, bye, I'm, I'm getting a divorce. So his parents are divorcing. And he grows up with his mother. And, well, you have all just all the puberty and, and growth you're going through through your life. But also that demon energy and I didn't want to make it uh, too extreme but it has influence so uh, because of the demon energy he gets those pointy hairy ears and it develops over time it's not just oh you have the energy Boop. there we go with the ears and all the things um, his hair color changed um, I'm not quite sure which color I would use first, but I think something more dark, a bit dark brown. And, uh, well, first there are a few white hair hairs, but then more and more turns white. Well, and at a certain moment it's quite obvious something is going on. Um, but there, I was also thinking, well, um, he has the energy from a flame demon so he he is quite warm he doesn't get that cold but in the summer he could overheat quite easily because he is already quite warm and if you have no method to keep yourself cool yike so things like that and i thought well what if it's a so that was basically, I was liking the direction it went through. Um, and Silver, his boyfriend, uh, actually also has a demon inside him, or the demon energy. And he is a bit of the opposite, because that's fun. So he has a cool, cold demon energy in him. So he's cold easily so if he's in the cold oh, he gets super super ultra cold which is bad because your fingers can freeze off which is terrible Eesh. so that's basically the story i have in mind i think i gave some spoilers but i'm not sure if i am ever going to make a comic out of it because oh boy it's quite some work to make a coming out of it it would be fun though maybe future plans uh, another fun fact um, in the beginning uh, I wasn't very fond of reference using reference I thought ah, it feels a bit like stealing and oh I have to know all of this and I learned the anatomy and me 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 I grew wiser over the years of course and I think reference is perfect to use uh, if you get inspiration from it or things like that, fine. So, uh, when I was a bit older, I decided, well, what, what kind of person would fit Daniel? Um, I'm not sure if you can see it in the latest drawings and things like that. But uh, at a certain point, I used Stromae, the music m musician, uh, for in as inspiration for him because uh, he has a bit of a uh, the nose I really like the nose uh, and uh, he has very interesting proportions so I really like to draw him actually <laughs> so I used uh, I looked up some images and well Stromae is 
part French. I thought there was more nationalities in it. So I thought, well, he this is the look I want for Daniel a bit. So I used uh, some inspiration for him. I, I'm, I don't think you see it in every picture, but sometimes it shines through a bit. I made a little portrait of Stromae once. A character caricature was great fun, great fun. So, yeah, that's basically some things about Daniel. Oh, Daniel changed from demon also to a dancer. He uh, he has a career in dancing and modern dance because I think it's really interesting, and it's there's a sort of elegance in it, but also some strong emotion. So it's it's awesome. So I decided Daniel has to be creative, but I don't want him to be creative in the arts like drawing and painting because I don't want him to be I wanted to give him something else his own thing and then I came up with dancing because a lot of people can express themselves very well so that's my talk about Daniel for today uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time bye